Hi guys, Tom and Co here from Airgun Nation. What I've got in front of me today is my FX Impact, my brand new Hawk Sidewinder that I mentioned in the previous video, some UTG scope mounts, Eagle Vision scope cam, and XLM EXZR 1100. Uh, what I want to cover today is just a basic scope mounting procedure and to show you guys, if you guys buy yourself a new Hawk scope, uh, what to expect in the box. So with that, let me open this guy up and show you guys what's in there. So here's everything that was in the box. Uh, this came to be double boxed, um, and as you can see here, I mean, nice good stiff foam protecting your scope, uh, your investment. Uh, Hawk did a good job packaging that, and then it was just a bunch of peanuts inside another box. But good job, Hawk. Uh, let's see what we've got here. We've got obviously the scope. This is a 6, to, six and a half to 20 by 42 uh, Sidewinder 30 SF. I've got my sunshade here. I've got, um, I didn't know what these things were at first and I'll go over those in a minute. Uh, here's a pointer for your focus knob. You can attach it right there. Um, just, like a, just like a scope mount it attaches and then it just gives you another focal point if you choose. Uh, this here is another one that you can put on. Uh, focus ring, it just makes it a little bigger, a little easier to turn. Not that this is hard to turn by any means, but uh, you know, it gives you a little more finite tuning if you're looking for that. Some tools, some instructions, a uh, glass rag, a battery for the illuminated reticle, and an Air Gun Nation sticker. <laughs> so I didn't know what these were. And um, I found out what they do. Uh, Scope now has these nice metal uh, lens covers, and they stick. They stick pretty, pretty good. They're really nice and strong. Uh, nothing's really going to get through there. And uh, what they, what these do is, there's a little ring inside here, and you just put this in the little gaps, and it'll loosen up that little, that inside ring, and then you can either twist this wherever you want it or you can take it off completely if that's your choice. Uh, that's really nice because some people don't like their their front eye or they don't like their caps to go up. Sometimes they like them to go to one side or the other. I'm one of those people. I like it to go off to the side. but um, That's just me. I'm a screwball. <laughs> a nice option to the Hawk scopes is the turrets are lockable and it's really easy to do. You pull up to make your adjustments and click away. And then you push down, make sure it seats all the way. Push down and it's locked in place. Your focus knob isn't going to lock, but that's okay. Um, and th that's really nice because sometimes I like to carry my rifle by the scope. I know some people say it's taboo, but I do it. And if I carry it on this side by mistake, I have a chance of uh, uh, turning my occupant. Alright guys, so here's your metal scope cap cover, and I just wanted to show you a close-up. That little notch right there, and that little notch right there. This key has two blades on it, and what you want to do is just fit that gently into there. You don't want to, you want to do this slowly so you don't gouge your glass. And then just loosen it up, and it comes loose. And if you keep turning, it'll come all the way out. Alright guys, let's get on with uh, some scope mounting. So. Basically what I'm going to do here is just, um, just mount the, my uh, scope mount bottoms onto my rail, snug them up. You don't need to really crank on these. Um, finger tight is probably good enough. If you want to add a little bit, uh, maybe take an Allen key. For these, they have two little holes and, you know, just give it a little, just a little extra little bit there. And that's basically it. Take my scope, make sure that uh, inside here is nice and clean and on your tops. I'll make sure there's no dirt in there because you'll gouge uh, and you possibly could dent your scope. Alright, I'll set that there. And then just take your tops, lay them in place, and then you got a whole mess of screws to put in. Now what you want to do is you want to get these screws down to where 
this top piece is level with the bottom one. And you don't want to tighten them down all the way yet. These are basically just to hold it in place. In fact, I'm hardly even putting these other ones in. Alright guys, so next what you want to do is you want to make sure that your scope is in the right position forward to back. So make sure that you can very easily turn this and slide it. Okay? The way I like to do this is I like to shoulder the rifle as if I'm going to shoot with my eyes closed. And then open my eyes. Helps to open the scope cap cover. Okay? Doesn't matter right now. You can see how crooked it is. That doesn't matter to me. What I'm looking for is a nice clear picture. So close my eyes, shoulder the rifle, open, and that looks pretty clear. Now I'm going to bring my head forward a little bit, things get blurry. Back to where I was, back a little bit, things get blurry. So it's looking pretty good right there. So the next part is going to be making this level. And what you want to do is you want to level your gun on a nice solid surface, and then you want to uh, level your scope. And I'm going to show you how to do that using this homemade plumb bob. And basically what this is, guys, is just I've got some weight on the bottom of a string and it's enough weight to hold that string in a straight line. You want to put enough to where if you're, you're using a string that was coiled up, it doesn't have that curl to it anymore. So just use enough weight, but just hang from anywhere. So guys, before we go and uh, level our gun, I want to talk to you real quick about levels. As you can see, I've got two torpedoes, a two foot, and two, these are called spirit levels. They're used a lot in the uh, filming industry for cameras and such. Um, not all levels read the same. So before you get started with, your, with leveling your scope, you want to make sure that your levels are basically level or reading, uh, or reading the same way. So I know it's, it might be hard to see, but my two foot level is reading level. This torpedo level is also reading level. This torpedo is reading slightly, uh, my left is a little bit high. This one reads, my left is a little high, and this one reads level. So I'm going to eliminate this one and take it out of the mix. Now these spirit levels, these are interesting because this one's reading a little bit to uh, left side high, but if I just go like this, now it reads almost perfectly level. And I twist it again, it still reads level. I twist it again, and it's not the wood underneath. Uh, now it's reading left side high. So you want to, if you buy these, and I think I found these on eBay or Amazon, uh, you want to just check them. You know, buy a couple of them and just and just check them. Because even this one here, same thing. You know, if you just twist twist it over, you can get different readings. And once you find out what side is consistent with your other levels, just draw an arrow on the side so you know which way is up. So now I'll put you guys behind the, uh, the scope cam and show you how to level your scope. So one more thing before I put you guys behind the scope cam. Um, if you've got an FX Impact coming and, and this is uh, why you're watching the video, uh, a neat little thing that FX has done inadvertently is if you just unscrew uh, your cheek rest and take it off, you've got a perfectly flat surface here. So if all you've got is, is a larger level, like a two foot or a torpedo, and it's not going to fit under your scope, you've got a nice flat surface that you can work with. All right guys, so here we are behind the scope cam. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my rifle is level. And now, using that string as a guide, I just rotate until my vertical reticle lines up with the string. And now my scope is level. So since we're here, I figure I can show you what it looks like if you are too far back. You start getting this halo on the outside of your scope. That's not what you want to see. And then if you get too close, see how I got the same thing, I've got that shadow there. Um, 
you don't want to see that. You want a nice bright pitcher all the way around with no haze or anything on the outside. Okay guys, so now we've got our scope leveled and we're going to start tightening down these screws. So these, uh, whatever two you picked, they should be pretty close to being snug already. So we'll just snug them up a little bit more. You're still not cranking down yet and while I'm doing this, I'm watching this level to make sure that my scope doesn't twist side to side. If you were to just tighten down, say this side, it has a chance to twist the scope. So now let's run these other uh, loose screws down. And what I'm going to do next is crisscross pattern. Okay, just like that. And I'm just turning these a little bit at a time so I don't disturb anything. Now I'm on a shaky card table, so my scope's going crazy right now. But I mean, I mean, my level's going crazy right now. But um, and just snug it down until it's going to start leaving an imprint in your thumb, and that's when you know you're just about there. You don't need to crank down on these. If you really, really crank down on them, you have a chance of uh, of gouging your scope. Um, there's really no reason for it. Now, you Springer guys out there, you might want to crank down a little more than, than uh, us PCPs. But, um, so that's basically it. Now you're all set. If you have a scope level, uh, now would be a good time to put it on and get it all nice and leveled out as well. I had to move inside the house, guys, because we had a windstorm move in. And uh, it's blowing about 40 miles an hour, and I could barely hear myself talking out in the garage. So uh, now that we've got our scope mounted and leveled, and if you like I said if you have that scope level uh, put that on there's one more thing you want to do and that's to uh, adjust your ocular so bring your scope say in the house and take a peek at uh, a white wall just something just flat you don't need to focus uh, your focus knob and have your wall in focus what you want to be focusing is this part to your eye so what you're going to do is with the Hawks they've got a locking ring here so Unscrew both a little bit and then loosen up your locking screw and shoulder your rifle and take a peek. And if your reticle is not instantly in focus, then you're going to want to adjust this one way or the other until it becomes in focus. Uh, and then, with, like I said with the Hawks anyway, you can lock that in place so you don't ever have to touch it again. Well, guys, that's all I've got for you today. I hope you got something out of this. And until next time, happy shooting.